Hi, my name is Russ Holmans with Phoenix Sales. Today I'd like to take a few minutes and share some key features and how-tos for using FlexiSoft software. Our tag database is common between the HMI and latter portions of the application, except for network addresses. Network registers are not available in the latter portion of the application. However, they can be moved to local registers for use in ladder. Today I'd like to show you how to add tags and what different tag types are used. Sometimes I'll use the word tags and other times I'll use registers. Tags and registers, they're the same thing. So let's take a look at our register types and how to add them to the tag database. So we're going to right click in the tag database. That will allow us to add a new tag. So we right click here and we go down to add. This brings up our window that allows us to configure each individual tag and choose which tag types. So the first tag that we're looking at is a counter coil. Counter coils output when the counter reaches its preset value. They can be used anywhere in ladder as a normally open or closed coil. There can be up to 255 counter coils because there can be up to 255 counters. So we'll go ahead and add that counter coil, C.0. The next register type is a counter register, and therefore storing count values. Counters are normally used in ladder logic blocks for keeping track of slow moving products or cycle counting. Counter registers are two byte tags, so their maximum count value is 65,535. There can be up to 255 counters total per FlexiSoft application. So we're adding here the counter register 0. So click Add. Our next counter type in the list is a data register. And they are general use registers that can be used for storing user settings. These register registers can be broken down into individual bits of a data register including or indicating on off status. So here we're going to declare a, a register D15 and we're looking at bit 5 of D15. So we'll give this a tag name of data register 15 bit 5. So this allows us to monitor that bit. And with D registers, we can also declare that they're uh, registers, that it's a, a value type instead of just an on off coil. So we're going to declare a one byte register, and we can declare either a low byte or a high byte. So in this case, we'll declare a low byte. So D0 low byte. And then we'll go ahead and add a D0 high byte. So that allows us to just break down that D0 register as much as we need to. We can do bits, we can do bytes. And next we'll see how we can do a word. So we can do two bytes, which is a word. So we'll declare here a D4. So this will be a word register. And then we can also declare a double word register. So if you're using float math in any of your ladder blocks, you would need to use a double, a double word register. And with this, you want to keep in mind that you cannot have a D15 right next to D16. If D15 is declared as a double word, it actually takes up registers D15 and D16. So the next register types are indexing registers. So we have uh, I, J, and K. Uh, they are used for indirect addressing and applications where recipe handling is required. This is a one word register with a maximum value of 65,535. 
So our next register type is an input coil. Uh, they are physical digital input connections from the I.O. modules. These registers are automatically populated when you assign a specific digital expansion module. The tag name of the input can be changed to reflect what the input is. For example, if the input is an emergency stop, the tag name can be changed to e-stop. So we went ahead and changed that to e-stop and we're going to add that. The next register type is an input register and these are used for showing all physical inputs for a given module in one 16-bit word. These registers are auto-populated when an expansion module is added to the application. So we'll just go ahead and show that we can also assign it. We'll give it a name. So we'll just call this slot one expansion inputs. So again, these are assigned when you declare the expansion module. These are automatically added. So our next register type is an internal coil. And they are single bit registers used for inter internal use. They can be used in the HMI for indicating if the user has a pump on or off, or if they want to run the machine. They can be used in ladder for activating logic based on the user turning on or off the bit. Internal coils can be used everywhere in your application. You can assign up to 4,095 indiv individual internal coils. So we've got a tag that we declared here. The next register type we want to look at is internal registers. And internal registers are word registers that indicate the state of 16 internal coils. For example, if we declare internal register BW0, this register will contain the state of internal coils B0 through B15. If we declared BW1, B16 through B31 will be represented. This pattern continues up to BW255, which represents the last B registers which could be added. So now we'll look at the I.O. configuration coils. They're used for con configuring expansion modules. These registers are auto-added when a specific expansion module is added to the project. The expansion module instruction sheet should be used to understand the functions, uh, and enabling and disabling the functions. Same thing for the configuration registers. We can look at output coils. These are the physical digital output connections from the I.O. modules. These registers are automatically populated when you assign a specific digital expansion module. The tag name of the output can be changed to reflect what the output is connected to. And same thing for the output registers are used for showing all physical outputs to a given module in one 16-bit word. Next register type is a retentive registers. They're used to retain user settings while the system is powered down. Retentive registers can be assigned as byte, word, or double word registers depending on the scope of the value stored. Keep in mind that the maximum rights to this register type is 10,000. Also, reading or writing to these registers takes up more processing time. So if the application you're developing is time sensitive, consider other alternatives to using retentive registers. The next register type is the system coils. And they're added automatically with the application as the application is initialized. Some system coils can be used to enable disable certain functions such as screensaver, beeper sound, enabling and dis disabling, while other coils are used to indicate the state of the device itself. So the next register type is the system register, and this is also added automatically when the application is initialized. Some system registers are read-only, while others can be written to. You can look through the list of SW tags in the tag database to get a better understanding of what system registers are available. 
We have timer registers, and they're used for the various timers available in the ladder editor. There are three groups of timers available with different time bases. Timer registers T0 through T60 are 10 millisecond time based. T61 through T190 are 100 millisecond time based. And T191 through T255 are 1 second time based. And we also have the timer coils, and they're used for indicating when a timer has timed out. So I'd also like to show you uh, in the data registers and, and on other of the register types, you can actually do an auto declare where you declare one register, and then you can give it a name. So we'll give this series of registers. And I'll go ahead and hit the auto add function. And this allows us to add um, as many tags as you need to at one time. So here we'll add 50 tags at one time. And this basically just saves you time for adding registers. So if you had a series of registers, whether it's a recipe or different events that are all similar and in the same family, you can do an auto add. So that does it for our tag database. It's just an overview of what's available and the different uh, register types. Thanks for watching this video.